I think it's a great event. You know, this whole part of the industry is incredibly important to support the broader virtuous circle of what we do in developing medicines. Again, going from an idea to a molecule to an approved medicine and the ability to be able to store material and to provide these materials to patients really is the lifeblood of our industry. And to see a lot of the new ideas, the new thinking, and really the spirit of people here is, is pretty exciting. The one theme at this event that has stood out and was part of my keynote address this morning is patient centricity. And while that's an excellent theme in our industry, the ability to actually take that theme and to translate it into business practices, to operations, to procedures is incredibly important. And what I'm seeing is people starting to think about, to talk about, and now to put into practice all the different ways that they can truly deliver medicines in the most patient-centered way possible. And I think that's very exciting, and I think it's necessary for the way that the industry and the way broadly the discovery development of medicines is heading. For the cold chain industry, it used to be fairly straightforward. We generally provided medicines to broad patient populations, and the storage, the shipping, the way in which the medicines are delivered to patients was reasonably straightforward. What we're seeing, though, now is we're in this dawn of a golden age of medicine, and that's leading to many new therapies, new types of therapies, and very customized therapies. And with those customized therapies come unique challenges in how they are shipped, transported, and again, safely delivered in the highest quality to hospitals, physicians, and patients. Um, so what we're actually seeing then is, with this dawn of a new age in medicine, much more precision medicine, the need for much more customization, ultimately in drug development, but that has to translate through the entire supply chain, and that's requiring new ways of thinking. The single greatest threat to our mission as a company, or more, more broadly to our industry, is if we fail in our mission to deliver medicines to patients on time and to deliver the medicines safely. You know, the Hippocratic Oath says the first charge of a physician is to do no harm. We need to make sure that we do that every single day in our industry, that once we've invested all this time and resource and money to make medicines, to get them to the stage where they're tested in clinical trials and then ultimately approved, it's incumbent on us every single day to make sure that those medicines are transported, delivered, shipped safely. Uh, that's incredibly important. It's the lifeblood of what we do in the industry. We have to realize that we not only make medicines and we transport them, we need to make sure that these medicines are responsibly priced and also that they're broadly accessible. That requires, again, a new thinking, sometimes a new business case or a new business model. Um, I've always believed that if we could make great medicines, get them to as many patients as quickly and as safely as possible, we'll build great businesses, we'll build great shareholder returns. And so I do think there are ways in which the system can work together to ensure that we have access. And I, I think there are fair balances that will come to play. In fact, I think we'll actually learn with individualized patient-centric medicine, there may be opportunities for much greater efficiencies, less waste in the system. If we know that a specific medicine stored and shipped and ultimately used in a specific way is right for certain persons, it could take away a lot of the inefficiencies from the system and actually make for a better business. For me as CEO at our company, Amicus, our priority is always, again, to make great medicines. Uh, we're really excited to have a portfolio now of gene therapy products. Presents a whole new series of challenges in science, in clinical development, as it will ultimately in the shipping and delivery of those medicines. So we think about that in terms of that entire life cycle of a product, but again, within that whole virtuous circle of how do we make medicines. So I, I try to balance my time thinking about pushing great science, thinking about new ideas, new diseases, where there's great unmet need. The other thing I really think about, too, is the broader environment, um, the policies being created, some being proposed, that could change the way that medicines are created and delivered. I think there are advancements that could strengthen our industry that ultimately will have a great benefit for patients. 
I do think there are proposals that could be quite harmful as well. Um, we need to realize in the biopharmaceutical industry, what we do is different. It really is special. And we do have that sacred moral obligation to not only make great medicines, but to ensure that everybody has access. And with that comes with tackling challenges like pricing uh, directly head on, uh, making sure that, again, medicines are fairly and responsibly priced. So that's a good part of what I think about kind of the, the parts of our business that we need as an organization to succeed, but also how do we continue to shape this environment so as we sit here on this golden age of medicines, we can make sure that we develop them uh, as rapidly as we can.